Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Carolina Conversation. I'm your host, Shimon Williams, and we have one of the greatest point guards to ever play at the University of North Carolina. He hails from Queens. Let me say that again. Queens, New York. All right. He came to the University of North Carolina in 1989-90. He was a McDonald's All-American. He was the best point guard in college basketball. And he was a 1993 national champion. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Derek Fells. Man, appreciate it, man. Hey, Queens get the money. That's why that's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> Queens get the money. So D, <laughs> man, how you doing, man? How you doing? Man, I'm doing great, man. Shoot, right now I'm I'm just in a place that you know I'm enjoying my 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 time, my free time yes. uh, with the family. You know, I haven't been with the family like this in like over 12 years, really. In no this, question. This college basketball, man, with this coaching stuff. So this time now is like really great and just like really what what other type of things I can get into, which is kind of <laughs> You know, my mind hasn't really thought about it till I was actually got a lot of time on my hands. So it's like right. a good thing, take the truth, you know, transitioning maybe. And, you know, I'll be back in the coaching game, so I'm not worried about that part. But yeah, it's a transition of okay. other things, man, business-wise and stuff like that, you know, no. to another direction. No question, man. When, you, when you're in this business for a long time and you're doing it consistently day in and day out, man, you know, sometimes you just don't know how, how great it is to just have a peace of mind. You know what I mean? I was able to, you know, step away from basketball a little bit in 2017, you know, and and man, it was like <laughs> the greatest time ever. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I, I'm extremely happy that you're able to spend, you know, step away from it, uh, what they what they call it, uh, recharge, and, but more importantly, spend time with your family and your son, and, and 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 groom him and, and and do the things that you know that that's the most important job and that's to be a father to our kids and and the, you know and, and raise our family so um you know you've been doing an outstanding job in, in college basketball for so many years man and you know the game will miss you for a little bit but like you said you'll be back ain't no question you'll be back yeah man like you said man just you know stepping away a little bit this 12 year grind you know being a college coach it's like you don't get no no months off or two months off. You once the season over, you back to recruiting. You back to work doing workouts. You know, it's like that's right. Stuff. It's like it's nonstop. And <laughs> one week they give you maybe, or maybe two. Oh, they say, hey, this is this is your week off. This is your time with the family. Like, come on, man. And my situation was different because I was on the West Coast and my family stayed that's in right. East. Oh, that's so right. That transition of the blessing of my wife. Could like I right, she know what I want to do so right settle in and like stay foot in New York City man and while I'm over there in the West Coast in California and Washington State it's like yeah me. so it's like me being in Europe and Washington State <laughs> right you know, no I, question yeah I might as well went to Europe and <laughs> <laughs> yeah but but it it is what it is man I've been successful like you said and my team yes. and and like I said so much you could do as when you got a certain school, man, it's like how far you can take a team. And right. Like I needed to get back to the East Coast, and I, I felt like the team I kind of left. I think they're good. I don't think it was going to be the, what we did last year. You know. Right. So, but I, those are my guys, man. I recruited most of those guys, so hopefully the best. No one. question. No question. No question. So, let's do this, D. Let's rewind. Let's go back. Take the hands of time. Let's go backwards a little bit. Let's go back to that 80, 9, 90 summer. You made the decision to come to the University of North Carolina. <laughs> Explain to everybody listening, what made Derek Phelps come to the University of North Carolina? Leaving the Big Apple, baby. Ooh. Well, I had uh, five schools, man, that I was really heavy, heavy on. And they, well, it was heavy on me. And uh, of course, North Carolina I had Kentucky uh -huh. with Rick Pitino. I had mm -hmm. Ben Behan over in Syracuse. I had Wade Houston 
over there in Tennessee at the time, Tennessee. where Allen Houston was there. Um, mm -hmm. My fifth, fifth school was Arizona with Luke, Luke Olson. So those were my five schools that I actually had, that I had locked down. That okay, this is right. what I'm gonna be. And uh, I w funny part, I went, my first visit was Arizona. Went to the West Coast, never really been out there. Loved it. Right. Big time, man. Like they needed a point guard too. Like they, at the time it was like Sean Rooks, Judd Bushler. Uh -huh. I think Sean Elliott just graduated and Steve Kerr just graduated. Mm -hmm. Matt Gilbach, you know, they had guys like that on their team and they had like a really good team. They just needed a guy that can distribute the ball, you know, organized stuff like that, which was a, I felt like it was a good look for me too, going to Arizona. Mm -hmm. It was just my first visit. So, you know, you can't get caught on like, oh man, this was great. And plus it was on the West. So it's like, mm -hmm. how come I how my family gonna see me? That's that was my thought process and stuff like that. And, right. Uh, right. Well, next visit was Syracuse with Jim Behan. And uh, on a, be honest, I wasn't really feeling the Behan, you know, <laughs> talk. And uh, just and at that time they wasn't really playing zone. I was a big fan of Sherman Douglas, so I was like watching those guys. They had Derek yeah. Coleman, Billy Owens, yeah, and Thompson. They had a crew. So yes. I went on the visit. I, you know, and I. I went on a visit with a couple other guys like Luther Wright, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, it was enough my he from Jersey, so you know, we got a yeah. lot. Of, uh, so it was it was a funny visit, but just wasn't my just wasn't my deal. And, and right. And like, and it was five hours away from New York. So, you know, is it's in New York, but well, you five hours away, it's Syracuse. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're fun. almost in Chapel Hill. <laughs> yeah, basically, I'm close enough, right? And, right. Uh, then I ended up going to Carolina, and I think. I, of course, I love that visit. Me and uh, Brian Reese came together on the right. visit. So, you know, that was that was a thing. Two New Yorkers, you know, my, my Bronx counterpart, and yeah. uh, you know, we we vibed the whole time. Even though we played against each other in the city and stuff like that, but we never really like linked up and like talk with each other and like and go on a visit like that to really get to know each other even better. And uh, and but I think the biggest reason I kind of choose Carolina was Dean Smith. He had me in his mm -hmm. office. And I, I think the biggest thing, which you would never say to a recruit, is like, you know, none of you are McDonald's All-American. You know, I love New York guards, stuff like that. But, you know, i tell you the truth, we got eight other McDonald's All-Americans on our team too. And you have to fight for a position to play. Right. Well, I, that kind of took me back a little bit. I was like, whoa. <laughs> you trying to tell me that I will have to fight to get in a plane, to get playing time. Like, you know, me coming from McDonald's All-American, being the star, yeah. one of the stars on my team. Stuff no like question. That. And everybody else was telling me, hey, the ball's in your hand. You your hand. <laughs> yeah. Once you come in, ball's all yours. You telling me that I got to earn my position. So my whole mindset at that time was like, I need to come here to take that as a challenge. Like, that's what I kind of needed. Like, right. I, didn't, I didn't want stuff given to me. You know, right. coming from a program at Chrysler King in New York City. So I didn't want, I had to earn my position in that aspect too. So I wanted to go somewhere like, who's going to challenge me? Who's going to make me better? Who's going to get my mind advanced in the game? And him challenged me like that. said, this is where I need to go to say, mm -hmm. hey, coach, I'm going to show you that, yeah, I'm going to be in that position. I'm going to be starting and I'm going to be running that team, you know. And you know, it didn't happen my first year, which was, a good humble experience, which you know, I wasn't surprised. You know, we had good players, we had good talent. We went to the mm -hmm. final four that year, right? You know, with King Rice as a senior, with Rick Fox, with Pete Chilcut, those were our senior leadership. So, and just to mm -hmm. get a and after that, Zoom took off. Yeah. Now, did you have any reservations about coming to Chapel Hill? Because, like you alluded to, you went to Christ King. You know what I mean? You know, uh, are, are there any other point guards that played at North Carolina that went to Christ the King? No, 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 no other. Point okay, guard. okay. So, so funny part, my backcourt partner, Kyle Reeves. Yeah, considered the best backcourt in the country my senior year, and uh, the funny part, he ended up going to Arizona. That's all right. He committed first. So cause I went to the visit first and I told him when I came back, I said, dude, Arizona, nice. And he wanted to go to somewhere warm. 
that was his whole mindset. So he was going to places like Texas, uh, Georgia Tech, UCLA, and like mm -hmm. he was like he going somewhere warm. So when he came back, said so he's going to Arizona. I was like, ah, I don't know if I want to play with him another four years or whatever it may be. You know, really? You know, okay. Like, Christ the King. But yeah. My whole deal was like, all right, we need to separate. You know. Yeah. But uh, I kind of I would never. And like other point guards, just in the city, period, there was a lot of point guards. It was just Kenny. It Smith. was. Malloy. Yeah, Malloy. Yeah. Malloy. He's a New Yorker, of course. Uh, and I, I know Kenny Smith very well, and just him being a New Yorker, being from Queens as well. Yeah. Um, so the relationship was there. You know, right. Being recruited from Carolina, that kind of helped the relationship build even more. But uh, right. I have no. Carolina, like, if I had to do it all over again. I would right. The same thing. And like just for the challenge and just a competing wise, because you want to go into practice and compete for your position, play against guys that was ahead of you or just as good as you. You want that challenge. And like, I think I wanted that. And in my mind said, like, OK, let's go. Let's go. Right. Make and coming out of Christ the King, I didn't I played varsity two years. So people thought I just went from freshman, played varsity. No, I went from mm -hmm. freshman, JV. So I had to like humble myself, too. Thought I could play right. So the, my, my high school coach at the time told me like I could have played my sophomore year on varsity, but we had another guy that had a lot of Division One offers Christ, at uh, at Christ the King. He was a senior, but he didn't want me to mess up his opportunity. And like, right. playing time for him to get those Division One offers. So, so yeah. I, I got I had that experience already sitting stepping back, and then come in when my time when they put the ball in my hands and. And after that, you wasn't going to take the ball from my hands. Right. Out. No question. <laughs> no question. Yeah, that class, that class was crazy, you know, because you had you and Khalid, then you had you had Red and B over at all the time. Hey, listen, we had Jamal Mashburn that Mash. didn't make McDonald's all American. And he was player of the year in New York City. <laughs> right. Guys like Robert Phelps with the Providence. Yeah. Got Anthony K, which was a McDonald's All American, but he's from New York, but he went to Oak Hill. Right. So, you know, we had a lot of New Yorkers come out that year in 1990, man, from uh, McDonald's All American being New Yorkers. Yeah, yeah, no question. So, no question. Now, how was it for you, D, once you got to campus that summer? You know, how was it? You know, you, like you said, you're leaving the story program. Uh, you, you know, you know, Coach Smith had told you. You're going to have to battle for playing time. You know, if you just wanted to play, you know, having that mindset and then reaching campus, you know, how was things? Because, you know, that's, you know, that's some, that's some things you experience as a freshman that you don't really know about when you get to Chapel Hill, but you learn quickly once you get there. So let's talk about when you arrive the campus. Well, you know, just, just getting there, get into your dorm. We made the, made the eight hour trip with my with my mom and my step pops and uh right. you know, getting settled in, you know, and just the just the orientation of it. And you know, that 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 stuff is all new. So <laughs> my high school, you have no clue. You know, <laughs> right. You know, I, I gotta go where? I gotta go where? And you know, like, you know, just just that aspect of it and, and not used to doing it. And uh right. just uh and you basically gotta do do everything on your own a little bit, you know, you gotta get to where you got to go. You know, you get some help, yeah. but you got to figure things out on your own. That's that's being a college kid. And right. uh, me coming from New York, coming into a little slow down Carolina <laughs> country kind of stuff. It was, it was different for me because, you know, the way people talk was different. Right. I, was, I was like, huh? I, I couldn't understand <laughs> it time. Like, you know, and I'm a, I'm a New York, I'm a fast move. I want to go, let's go. Let's, right. let's, I got to go. People want to take their time, want to, you know, Everything a little slow down pace, you know, and that was right. my, my thing. Like, let's go, yo, B, let's go, we go, we going here, let's rock, you know. That, that was our mindset. Right. So, and uh, and first of all, we came in as five guys. So five, I was, I was gonna get to that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Five. So me, Clifford, Rose, that's right. Eric Montross, B. Reese, and Pat Sullivan. So right. we came in five. So right. We, we had a collective group that we all can help each other. So that was that was a little different. So, you know, like I said, we consider the first fat five. I always tell those dudes that. No question. <laughs> we, we didn't have the the notoriety, not the notoriety, just the 
didn't it allow us to be, yeah, high, you know, yeah, yeah, more like in control. We wasn't allowed as freshmen to talk to the media and on campus and stuff like that. He kind of kept us in like a little. I said, I ain't gonna say a box, but in that, you know, kept us in like. He didn't want us to get in no. Hey, y'all gonna think y'all gonna start? You know, fighting the other guys on the team, right? You know, he already had the was on us coming as four McDonald's all Americans coming in saying That's right. hey, it's gonna be it's gonna be a battle going on with these guys coming in but he didn't want no craziness going on with the team so he kind of kept us away from all that craziness with the media and talking to people so but like I said we counted five guys man we had to figure things out and the challenge was in practice you learn the hard yeah. way and uh <laughs> you know you come in everybody else that knows what's going on you, you got to come figure it out and it wasn't like uh, we're gonna take it slow for the freshman no you get thrown into the fire right and you gotta figure out yo, know, where you where you place that how you gonna because coach smith you know he never cursed you know he really didn't yell but just the way his voice carries you know he right was, oh you know he was very sarcastic yes <laughs> very sarcastic either <laughs> And, and he get his point across being sarcastic, which is the or <laughs> in the way he comes up, the way his voice is and being sarcastic, he'd be like, come on, you might as well yell at me and curse at me. <laughs> you know, because you've been, you've been around the coaches like that when you're in high school, but you're like, you might as well just curse at me. You know, just go say, <laughs> say something like that. But uh right. you know, it was a challenge, man, you know, being a freshman, but I wouldn't have it any other way, you know, coming in and, and trying to learn the process, learn how to you know, grow up a little bit, you know, cause I'm coming in right. as, you know, 17, 18, you know, it depends on what, what year you are, but it's like, you got to learn how to grow up and figure things out. And I think it was the best thing for me. Yeah, no question, no question. So going into the battles then, you know, going into the battles, going into your freshman year, you know, how, how would you classify your freshman year? How was your freshman year? And like you said before, you had, you had a great group of guys that, you can lean on you mm -hmm. know everybody everybody's experience is going to be a little different but at least you were going through it with some other guys that you know you probably going through some of the same things so you know talk about your freshman season you know what it, it was a uh, i'm not going to say up and down it was just a little different uh i think the biggest thing because you know with coach smith if he had five you know there's five guys that are going to start he's he always said that the best defender We'll start. Right. So me knowing me, I'm a defender. That was my right. so I was like, I'm in. You know, I'm saying I'm gonna get in this, get in this war in this battle. And uh and he always said, like, I don't need five guys trying to score all the time, you know what I'm saying? I need guys, I need those guys in each position that could defend, and those are guys that will start. And like I said, everybody can score. Yeah, I know I can recruit guys. I, he recruited guys that can score, of course, but he needed guys right. that could defend. So my thing was like, hey. I was already like a defender, you know, I was mm -hmm. steals and stuff like that coming out of high school. I was like six steals a game in high school. So, you know, my thing was, you know, keeping guys in front. I guarded guys, the best players. I guarded Colin Reeves every day in practice for me to get right. So No question. He one of the top scorers in yes, high school when he was in college. So, you know, no question. that made me better. So I knew when I came mm -hmm. in, like, I'm in. And the funny part, I ended up starting. I won the position. I started my first, what? Two to three games, because mm -hmm. I won the position that, in that aspect. But the the worst part that's what my season was kind of up and down. I started and it got to a point he only played me the first two minutes. I could play great, I could play solid, I could play bad. It didn't matter. I was coming out at that eighteen minute mark, or when that next buzzer was coming, and here comes King coming in, because you know he always right. older guys and stuff like that. That was his. That was his deal. That was Coach Smith's deal, which, you know, I understood it at the time. Right. But it got to a point, like, I think after the third game, whatever, I just told, I had a meeting with Coach Smith. I said, All right. I, said, I had to be like, I said, Coach, we just have to have a talk. I said, listen, I said, I get it. I know I won the position, but, you know, if I, you're not going to let me, like, play it out a little bit, you know, just going to give me two minutes, no matter if I play good or not. You know, I'm going to just come off the bench. That was kind of about like our talk and like I think after I did that, I think he respected me the rest of my even more. Yeah, even yeah. more. Just even saying that. He's like, 
either way, I'm going to play my 10 to 15 minutes as a freshman, even though I kind of won the position. It's like, there's no purpose. It's like, you can't get no feeling the first two minutes. You know, you're trying to get your groove, you know, maybe yeah. that three minute, four minute, that first media, then I, I'm cool, but you just gonna automatically take me out the first two minutes. Like, you might as well just, let me come off the bench. <laughs> I'll yeah. You know, I was, I was no ego guy and stuff like that. I was a team guy always. So my right. dad, let me just come off the bench and I just like, I'll play my whatever 10 to 15 minutes you want to play me. So, and, and like, you know, and I think it kind of worked because then we had like a good squad coming off to relieve the older guys and we come in and we, we gave a different aspect. You know, we kind of right. full court, we kind of ran, we threw it inside of Eric. So it was like a little different feel from Rick Fox and King and Chilcut, those guys. So, and uh, it kind of worked the, the rest of the year, really. But, you know, like I said, it was like an up and down type deal. But just the success, we were winning. You just, you take it. I don't That's care. That's right. I don't care how many minutes I was playing. We were winning. That's right. Winning. That's uh, right. What what beef do I have to go in your That's office? right. Coach, I should be playing more. You know what I'm saying? We were winning. We ended up being 34 and four that year. Went to the final four. So yeah. there was no complaints. It's like, I, I enjoyed the experience. I got the minutes I played, I played to my fullest and, you know, did whatever to help the team. So the freshman year was, like I said, it was up. It was up, then it kind of went down, then it just went solid after that. So, but right. I have no complaints of my first year in college basketball. Sure, that's awesome, man. Cause you was able to do something that a lot of people, <laughs> a lot big, very few at that time for sure very few get that opportunity to yeah, put themselves in a position a too? like you think like yo i'm in what <laughs> yeah hey hey coach coach know what he was doing i can't let him i can't let him get too far out here i might not be able to bring it back <laughs> you nah. know what i mean and i ain't talking about bringing them back like you're gonna leave to go to the league and all that stuff but you know it's north carolina like very few yeah, you know a lot. A lot of people names you see up in the Raptors, they ain't start their freshman year. You know what I mean? Like, wow, exactly. so that was that 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 was big time, man. That that's big time. And so after, you know, being able to earn a starting position, like you said, alluded to earlier, and then being the ultimate team guy, say, listen, coach, I, I mean, yeah, you started me, but you're not letting me make an impact on the game. So you know, it's best that you you know you allow King to do it probably made the environment much better, made it easier for Coach Smith, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then going to the Final Four. And now, okay, you just finished at the Final Four, D. Now you're going into your sophomore year where, okay, she your show. Yeah. It, and you know what, tell you the truth, it was, I ain't gonna say it was a lot of pressure, but it was, you know, it was my show. Tell you the truth, I was the only, I was the only point guard, tell you the truth. Yeah. And uh, really, I didn't have no backup, backup really. Uh, and like Hubert was a senior, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Or Hubert was a senior, he was a lone senior too. And, uh, and we was a young team. So basically the five freshmen came in and now we have kind of taken over, you know? And then of course mm -hmm. you put the mix in there with George Lynch, you know, mm -hmm. like Henry Rodel, which kind of backed back me up for like yep. those two, the, the last, his last two years. Uh, for him being an older guy as well. So, you know, we had a good mixture of guys, but we were young. Right. We were one thing as Hubert, and Hubert was our main guy. Hubert was the main focus. No and, question. And like, Hubert averaged like 21 points a game that year. And like, he mm -hmm. was the guy, man. It's like, I got a lot of assists trying to get the ball. <laughs> <laughs> that right. Sophomore year. I think, that, I think that's my high assist output in my four years. Is my sophomore year. <laughs> really? He, he was the guy that be pinging threes on his sleep. <laughs> right. So, so, and like throwing the ball inside the Montrose and G Lynch and those guys. And uh, and D Reese was a, a, a small forward. So, we, we had a pretty good team and we were just young, man. And right. We ended up winning 20 games that year. You know, we had some good battles with that team down the road. And, uh, mm -hmm. They was a real good team over there at that the last my well my sophomore year and freshman and sophomore year they were really good should they won it yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it was really talented but <laughs> right we, we competed with those guys man we were just so young man we really didn't know but uh, right I think that helped me 
you know, playing a lot of minutes. I, I played like, like 33 minutes a game my sophomore year. Right. You know, so I said I had a lot of on my shoulders and, uh, but I was built for it. So, you know, me learning That's right. from year and learning from Coach Smith into sophomore year for my ball to be in my hands. Then I kind of learned from it, man. And just, it helped, it helped me. I think I got built my knowledge of the game even more because I had the ball in my hands and understood the offense, the defense part of it. So it was like, it brought in my horizon. Like, all right, I got a better feel what's going on now that I'm on the court a lot more. And so that kind right. of the rest of my career at Carolina to really analyze anybody in the position. You know, being a point guard at Carolina, you got to know everybody's position. No question. Everybody. Everybody's position. Because I remember I got fussed out one time because Montrose wasn't in his position. <laughs> I was, this is my first year. I was like, Coach, why are you yelling at me? It was like, he's, <laughs> oh, God, you got to make sure he's there. You can't run a play day till he's there, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, Coach, I got it. So you're not going to tell me once. I used, to right. get on, I used to get on anybody. You wasn't there. You might, I might have been the coach. I was like, Coach, get him out. <laughs> What's going on? I was, I, was, I was the worst. You can ask B. Reese. And that, that was my roommate. And I used to like, yo, get BB out. You know, he ain't ready. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it was crazy. It was crazy. But like I said, that part of it made me understand the game more and watch a film with, you know, Coach Ford with those, and those guys to get my knowledge of the game way better to understand the offense and the defense on both sides and know me being the point guard, I got to know everybody's position. Like, you can put, right. my, you can put me at the power forward. I can, I can do whatever the power forward can do. That's and, right. And the play. That's he, right. You know, so that was that was the best part being a point guard and being an extension to Coach Smith and run the team. Team. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, like you said, y'all had a great season that year, right? And you but you still were kind of young, your sophomore year. Mm -hmm. And then that year, the guys down the road end up winning the whole thing that year. And yeah. so now here it is. You had a whole year under your belt. Those guys down the road won, you know, the national championship. Um, now you're going into your junior year. Mm -hmm. And you're a little bit more seasoned. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you, you're, you're a different type of team. You know, the same team, but a different type of team. Mm -hmm. Probably a little bit more grittier now. Um, so tell me your mindset going into that 1992-93 season. Um, I think the biggest deal is Coach Smith when we got that summer or ended that summer before school started. We basically put the new the New Orleans Superdome in our locker. It says mm -hmm. 1993 national championships in everybody's locker on our mirrors. And like just to focus on that, because I think Coach Smith knew what type of team he had too at the time. And like seeing that as a as a junior, knowing that this is the goal. So, and with the guys on the team, like I said, we more a little seasoned, we a little more gritty. We know what to do. We know how to play with each other. Like, mm -hmm. and like, this is Donald Williams' second year. Mm -hmm. I didn't even talk about him his freshman year. Freshman year was kind of a wash for him because he was playing behind Hubert. And right, and that's another story. Yeah. We got to make sure to keep him to, to come back the next year because he you know. He went to the Western <laughs> Wolves. <laughs> yeah. You know, but just of us being seasoned and now Donald got put in the place where Hubert was and just him, his understanding that he got to make a big jump himself kind of was the was the important link to the chain of everybody else because everybody else played a lot. Right. And when he came in and he was focused and ready and shooting that thing the way he was shooting it, it kind of led us in, in the right direction, man. And I think for me and where George was our senior leader, you know, with guys like Rodo and the Matt Winstroms and stuff like that, the Scott Cherries they, that have been there for the past four years. So they knew what it is taking. And those guys were, Matt, you know, Matt Winstrom was a McDonald's of America, you know, people don't right. know, which is crazy. Yeah. He, didn't really play, he didn't really play that much at Carolina. Was right. Crazy. So that's, that's, that's something, the test to him, that is amazing for him to be in four years, a guy that was, that level player coming out of high school too, but we were yeah. so, so focused on our goal, and our number one goal was to win a championship. We 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 was in practice battling every day to make sure 
that we're gonna be there when the time when that time comes. And like we didn't mess around. Like we came out from the jump. We were blowing people out by 30. Nobody measured that by junior year. We were beating people by 30 our first mm-hmm. 10 games. And that, yeah. that's how much focus we were we were. And I think the biggest thing, we were more focused on the defensive end than we were in the offense. I think our defense generated our offense. Right. You know, just with the double and, and G Lynch was all over the floor. You know, mm-hmm. my pressure up front made him freelance the, the, the run and jump and get steals and that guy should throw that ball like pop flies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and get running. And uh, I, I think that was a big key of us. We were, like I said, we were the link to the chain. Like one, the, the, the chain broke. We figured out how to get that chain back and made it fit together on defense. Cause you know, so, cause somebody will go off hand. And I think G Lynch used to always just go off the script every time. But we said, oh, G Lynch off the script. Hey, everybody adjust. Cause you know, and that's how, that's how great we were as a defensive team. Cause somebody went off the script. We adjusted so quickly. And right. those big guys like Montross and, you know, Winstrom's in the back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go, go, go down there to get your shot blocked so we can run a break anyway. So, right. Like, like I said, we, 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 like I said, we were so focused and so linked together. And like, and like I said, our leadership with G Lynch, he, like he was determined. And uh, mm-hmm. that kind of took, it took off, man. And like I said, we only lost four games that year. And mm-hmm. funny part, nobody talks about it. We lost to Michigan and Hawaii in the Rainbow Classic. Yeah. I, I was going I was going to ask, you know, like you played in some of the the most, you know, story games huh? in college basketball. I mean, that first, like you said, you know, you talk about the Fab Five and so on and so forth. You guys were the first Fab Five. Yeah. Now you have this other young Fab Five here in Michigan that that the media is, uh, you know, kind of behind. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, great players for sure. Um, and so, you know, you guys having to battle earlier in that year in uh, in Hawaii. Yeah. You know, you know how how was that game for you guys? It was it was a it was a battle. I remember us being in the tunnel, and they was in the tunnel, and they were, and they was talking mad junk. Like, like we were bums or something. Like, you know, this this the disrespect that this them. I don't know. I, they said something crazy in their huddle when they went out, and it's like, okay, this game is gonna be, it's gonna be lit, cause right, it, it got me going. I'm like, all right, you know, I'm usually like waiting for the ball to go up. Here, there, he got me going before the <laughs> before the ball went up. You know, what I'm saying, I think I was the leading scorer of that game too, which was crazy. That's how, <laughs> I'm not the person that's trying to score, so I knew I was ready right. trying to score. <laughs> right. So, but uh, that was a battle just to compete against those guys and the talent they had. And just knowing that we know we felt like we were the better team at that time, but you know, you lose. Sometimes you right. lose. Um, which happened on a buzzer shot. I think Weber shot it over the rim and Jalen Rose tipped it in on the other side. And that's how we mm-hmm. lost in the end of the end of that game. So we was pretty much mad about that. Then uh who else? We lost to Duke that at Duke. And we lost at Wake Forest, back to back. Oh, wow. Yeah, back, to back. So, you know, that's when they, you know, we got Rodney Rogers. Rodney Rogers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They, they, <laughs> they, they have to prove. They have to prove. Yeah. They blew Rodney up. Rogers. Yeah. Rodney Rogers was a, a man child. <laughs> yeah. He was a man child. <laughs> and uh, we lost to those uh, guys. Got blown out. Like we lost to Duke first, then we lost to. Then we lost to uh, what's them call it? Um, Wake Forest, and like we had a little stumble. We lost to them back to back. I said another story game we had that year was against Sam Cassell and Charlie Ward, yes. Bob Sura, Doug Edwards, Rodney Dobar. They had a crew up at up yes. West Florida State, man. They came in the Carolina. I think this is when they first came into the league. Yes, first came into the league, and you know they wanted to prove a point. That, hey, they belong in the ACC. And they came mm-hmm. at us like full force, like blowing us out by like 21 in the first half. Yeah. And I think that's when that's when all the wine and cheese crowd started with the Sam Cassell talk. <laughs> <laughs> Sam was like, hey, the, the guys out there just <laughs> there eating their wine and cheese and clapping and all so. <laughs> so <laughs> you know, Sam was like, ah. you know, yeah. and, he, and he felt disrespected because. I wasn't guarding him. 
you know, it's like it's respectful that they, they you know, put their best cop defender on me. Da, da, da. You know, that's the time I was guarding Charlie Ward. Uh, but uh, yeah, and, they, and we ended up made a historical, one of the historical comebacks. Comebacks, that's right. Yeah, winning that game. And like, I think that's when we realized, man, it's, our focus got to be even more because people are coming at our heads. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think ever since then, I think after we lost the Wake Forest, we haven't really lost a game till that ACC championship game, the game I actually got hurt. The mm -hmm. game before the semifinals against Virginia when I got the tailbone injury. Mm -hmm. and that was a scary sight too, because I didn't think, I couldn't feel my legs. Which really? Was before. Yeah, and, and it happened in Charlotte. And uh, and it was a big snowstorm. I remember this clearly, because snowstorm, and it's like, it was like, you know, me in my tailbone, and like everything, you felt every rocky <laughs> snow slide, and it was, it was crazy. And, right. Uh, and I was fortunate to have my mother there that was with me and stuff like that. And I ended up being okay, of course. And of course I had mm -hmm. to sit out till they, the NCAA started. You know, they weren't, right. I, I, was, I was ready to go, man. And like my mind said like, just throw on the football pads. Right. And I was ready to go. So, and like, and it started from there, the first game. And, and I think I didn't even play the first game. Did I? No, I kind of was there just in case. Right. You know, just in case. I can't even tell you who we played the first game. That's how bad it was. That's <laughs> we played, I mean, I know we played Rhode Island the second game. Right. I know that for sure because I played that game. But, yeah, it, that, that's when it all started. Yeah. And so, you know, like you said, you guys had got it together. You saw what you were more than capable of doing as a team. And there you are, like you said, first round, second round, you know, third round, fourth round. Now you find yourself at the at the place that you began looking at from that summer, from that picture in your locker. Mm -hmm. You found yourself in New Orleans at the Superdome. You know, how was it now that you're there? Now you're there. So being that you're there, now you have a chance to fulfill that dream, fulfill what you had, you know, set out to do from the beginning. You know, how was it to actually be living in it? And uh, what were your thoughts and, and motivation to, you know, to get it done? Yeah, I think the best, best part of that, like I said, what you, what, what was the goal from the beginning and what that picture was on our, on our lockers is like, all right, we here now. Yeah, right, that's one of the goals. You know, you know, Coach Smith always had our goals. Yes. Well, we had, you know, hey, we got to win the first round, second round. I right, get to Sweet 16. That was a goal. You know. Right. Next round, final eight, we got to win those two games. Now we made it to the final four. That was one of the goals. But the funny part, when we won the, uh, when we won the, uh, got to the final four, you know, when you, we get to the final eight, when we beat Cincinnati in overtime, we didn't even mm -hmm. cut down the nets. You know, usually you cut down the nets to go to, the, before you go to the final four. It's like, nah, this is much bigger. You know what I'm saying? This ain't, this ain't our goal. That's why usually people cut the nets down. We did not cut the nets down. So we waited till, of course, we, we wanted to win. But at that time, we was more focused. Like, we got a bigger prize we want. We want those nets at the Superdome. That was, our, that was our mindset at the time. And like, of course, you got Michigan, you got Kentucky, and you got Kansas. And us. Yeah. And I think our biggest thing was we got to we play in Kansas. I was still upset that we lost to Kansas our freshman year in the Final Four. So right. Like, so that, that was another goal, like, all right. Of course, going against Roy Williams and those guys with Rex Walters and like Adonis Jordan, those, mm -hmm. that, was, that was their little crew they had. They had a really good team, Oster Tag, Greg Oster Tag. Uh, and like, our goal was like, kind of like a revenge game ourselves. All right, we lost to the mm -hmm. Final Four, y'all, in 90, 91. All right, this is our kind of our payback. Let's get this done. And right. Of course, of course we did it. Of course we won the game and we, we played pretty good. You know, we, we handled our business, which is funny that playing against Kansas, it felt like you just, you just calling out all their plays because we kind of ran the same thing we ran. I'm going, hey, <laughs> hey, B3, they run B3, you know, a uh, hey, secondary double. You're just yelling out their stuff, yeah. which, which is crazy. It's like you're playing in practice, like everybody knows. The <laughs> <plays>. <laughs> yeah. So, so you just kind of just jump, jump in the plays and stuff like that, which was kind of funny. But uh, we ended up winning that game and of course, when we got there, of course, we wanted to play Michigan because we ended up losing to them in the Rainbow Classic. And right. Lucky was really good, man. Hey, Nas Burn was 
killing folks all year long. <laughs> and they had like Travis Ford shooting the ball from anywhere. They had a really, uh, Andre Riddick uh -huh. shot. They had a nice little crew, man. And of course you thought they were gonna win, but you know, our, our goal was like, hope we got, we played Michigan. Right. And, uh, and of course it actually happened. Right. Yeah, it actually happened. And the funny part then of course that Monday, all you hear you, from Sunday to Monday to the game start, all you hear is about the Fat Five, Michigan, da 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 da. Sophomore season, they're gonna come back and redeem themselves from last year. Boom, boom, boom. It's like nothing about Carolina. Nothing. Right. It's like it's like we just we just got there on the whim or something. And it's kind of like looking at the TV and the news and all the sports centers. You kind of like it's like I wanted to play then. Like every time I see it on TV, I just I couldn't wait to play. And, uh, and it's like, I ain't gonna say they was disrespectful. It, it just it kind of act like, like we wasn't really relevant. You know? Right. We a team, we 33 and four at the time. Like, dude, we worked hard to get here too. So yeah. I, I get the, the Fab Five stuff, the, you know, the long shorts, the black socks, you know, they, the little fab they was doing and stuff like that. But right. you're a pretty good team too. I don't care what they saying, you know, what the media yeah. is saying. You know, I, and then when that ball went up, and everything just went to playing basketball. And I think I think that's the most nervous I've ever been because I had the butterflies probably for the first time. <laughs> really? Yeah. Before the before the ball went up, it was like it's like wow. being in this moment, playing in the Superdome when you got yeah hundreds of thousand people in the Superdome already. And then you, of course millions of people are watching. But I think that's the first time I had butterflies. But I was so ready. But once the ball went up, it's just basketball then. And no you just, question. You just you just go and you just play your game and just what you've been practicing the whole time and what you've been preparing for, and you just you just go at it. And uh, like you said, one of those one of those games, man, is one of the games that's in history right now. No question. Right? No Plain question. Simple. They they show it all the time. It always gets no question. It always comes up sooner or later. You know, right? A certain time of year, it always pops up. And, yeah. Uh, you know, you get calls all the time. Your game is on TV. Da 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 da. So you know. So I'm I'm fortunate and you know fortunate that one of the games I played in in the championship game that's gonna be continue to be played for I don't know right. how long and like yeah it's a pivotal, pivotal moment you know Dean Smith second championship and there's a lot yeah. of variables to this to that game man so like I said we ended up winning that game and of course you want to break you don't know if you want to break down the timeout situation but <laughs> uh, I, yeah I, I was how was you I laugh about yeah. this whole thing because we were because you 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 yeah and you were in the you were in the what you were in the trap yes yes yeah you were in the trap yeah so we were up they fouled Pat Sullivan Pat hit the first one right that made us made us up be up two right and of course he misses the second one Weber gets the rebound he looks he wanted to throw to Jalen Rose but G Lynch you know, jump the passing lane that made him travel, which the biggest <laughs> non call, non seeing call in the world. That you see the guy doing the Michael Jackson forward, sliding his feet. <laughs> right. And of course, then he starts to dribble up the court. And that's where I'm at. I'm like right up, right above half court. Right. And now he's running towards me. That's when I kind of like boom, pick him up and start to guide him towards what our defense is. Towards the side. Yeah, That's right. and then he kept on dribbling. Then I kept on staying with him till he got to the corner. And then G Lynch always, he, what he does, breaks off script and <laughs> runs to the corner. <laughs> <laughs> runs to the corner and he starts, oh. starts to trap him. And that's when right. he calls time out. So now, that's how that now, all ended up. Yeah, now with you being in the trap and being right there, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of people or what, what, what did they say? Uh, there's a lot of people that that say, "Hey, you know, you can hear his teammates or somebody telling him to call a timeout, and and or you know somebody told him to say timeout, told Chris to say timeout, you know, conspiracy theories in that regard." Mm -hmm. With you being right there in the trap, did you hear anybody tell him to call a timeout that you could recall? No, my whole goal was I got to stop the ball, and nah, he's not getting to the <laughs> that. That was my mindset. I, I didn't hear right. any of that stuff. Uh, and the funny part, we knew they didn't have any timeouts. So, of course, you know, 
Dean prepares you for every single situation and, and tells you everything in the huddle before everything even happens. So, you know, Coach Smith was so far ahead of certain things, but you know, the, we know they didn't have the time to, so the surprise with me, like, I looked at the ref like surprised that, oh, she actually called this, like, knowing yeah. the refs know they didn't have any timeout, so he had no choice because it was so blatant and had the, he had the timeout signal and everything, and he turned to him, so it was like, he can't say, hey, he didn't see it or hear it. So, right. so that was my big surprise, and once I saw that, I was like, it's over. <laughs> That was, that was my whole mindset. I looked, I was like surprised, like, what? We're gonna get two free throws and the ball back? And Donald Williams was on fire. Right. You know, like I was like, they, they might as well just, just stop the game now. But it was it was like a relief and like a sort of like accomplishment. Like, and of course, you know, Coach Mill always tell you, like, hey, it ain't over to the buzzer sounds off. So, you know, even though in right. our mind that we feel like we won, but we of course, we, we never showed it, but our whole deal was like, oh, when I saw that happen, I'm like, I knew this was over. Mm -hmm. and we just had to make our free throws, get the ball back, got fouled again, and it was a wrap. And like, one of the one of the best moments or best accomplishments I ever had, like as a basketball player, you know, for right. a, goal, a goal that you was pursuing from the beginning of the summer working on your game, individuals, you know, that stuff we used to always do at Carolina, man, and actually get mm -hmm. to the point and actually win one, it's like a big deal. For mm -hmm. sure. It is, most definitely. Most definitely. And, you know, it, it, it's, it played such a historic part of basketball history. And, uh, you know, to be a part of that and, and most definitely to end up winning the national championship had to be a, a great accomplishment. Um, and so there it is, your junior year, you win the national championship. And now you're coming back senior, senior year and you relatively have everybody coming back with the exception of George Lynch who graduated and was drafted 12th in the NBA. But you have three freshmen, McDonald's All-Americans that are coming in. And, and a lot of people will, will say that this was probably the best team, talent-wise, that the University of North Carolina has ever seen and put on the floor at one time. And so tell me about that with the addition of Rasheed Wallace, Jerry Stackhouse, and Jeff McGinnis. How was that <laughs> going into your senior year? Uh, you know, knowing, hey, you know, I just won a national championship. I I probably have a little bit more firepower than I had the previous year, mm -hmm. you know, and and I'm the leader. I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how was that, D? How was that? Well, like you said, you had three super talented guys coming in, man, and you're just coming off a national championship. And I think it all started in the summer. Uh, these guys, you guys came in, they came in and they wanted to play. They came in and they, when they, when those workouts were going or we played pickup, dudes was going at you. They came <laughs> right. in there, you, you know, when Montrose going against Rashid, me going against McGinnis, B. Reese and Stackhouse going against each other. So it was like so competitive. I think practice was the was the best games, to tell you the truth. Us, uh, right. us battling and just playing and competing because guys wanted to play, especially those three right. guys, like you said, coming in as McDonald's as well. And uh and and those guys with that stature they had, they were wanted they wanted to figure out how they they're gonna get on the court too. They didn't care that we won a national championship last year. <laughs> they, they, you know, they, they wasn't they wasn't where they was happy that team won, but they wasn't on that team. They come in and trying to, they were trying to go come in there and put their footprint. Right. They wanted to do and how, how they wanted to, they wanted to get to that same level as well. So it didn't matter who <laughs> won the national championship last year. So, but, but uh, the competition level in practice was intense. And it's like, it was a battle every day. Cause like you said, the best defender is going to play, you know, right. start, not, not say play, start. And, uh, and I think probably one of Coach Smith, probably toughest 
battle of figuring things out, to tell you the truth. And it's like, right. I think the biggest thing, like, don't get hurt. <laughs> I, 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 think I, that, I think that was the biggest there. Don't get hurt. Because <laughs> you, you still had, you had Larry Davis over there too now. Larry, yeah, Larry Davis, Dante Calabria. Calabria, yeah. Yeah, uh, you still had Kevin Salvadori. Dory, that's right. Yeah, we, we, like I said, we we was loaded down there. Like I said, loaded. <laughs> yeah, so loaded. So it's like don't mess around and get hurt because you don't know if you're gonna get that spot back. And it wasn't no coach. It was like I'm playing with my seniors. Oh, oh. <laughs> it was like it was too much talent going on. <laughs> so, but but uh, like I said, that was the most talented team I ever been on. Yeah, and just like. And, and me being one of the leaders and stuff like that, and like being a point guard too, like it was like no question. How who I'm gonna get the ball to now? Who's rolling hot? Like who is like just the feel of it? Like let's push the ball up. Let's get rim runs. Let's throw it inside. It, it was it was a challenging type deal, and you know we, we took some some bumps and bruises that year. I think we lost like seven games, and mm -hmm. uh, but it was like a. A figuring out point, you know. Then you get certain guys got hurt, like B. Reese got hurt. And stack. I, I, stack I was up. actually, I was actually at the practice on my visit, first practice of the season when B. turned his ankle. I was in that practice. Okay, okay. And yeah. actually, and actually, in Coach Smith documentary, in Coach Smith documentary on Showtime, uh -huh. it's that's that's your senior year. It shows it. Yeah. Well, it don't show B. Reese getting hurt, but it shows it shows that practice. Yeah. Your 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 senior year that practice because I'm sitting over in the corner, and I I, I was there when B Reese, when B Reese turned his ankle. And yeah. it's interesting that you said, "Don't get hurt." Yeah. <laughs> first get first hurt. day of practice, he turned that ankle. Don't yeah. get hurt. It gets hurt, and like I said, and this this when Stackhouse kind of just shoot got in the lineup, mm -hmm. and it kind of took off, took off, mm -hmm. and and then B Reese did get healthy or close to it. Man, it was hard for him to like really like get his position back because, you know, yeah. we were pretty much like rolling pretty much at the time. And like mm -hmm. and Salvador, I don't know if Salvador got hurt or not, but Rashid was coming. Rashid, mm -hmm. it was like I said, it was battles and practice every day, man. And it's like, and Rashid got himself in there too, man. It's like, just, I said, the talent wise and me battling with Jeff McGinnis every day. Yeah. Know? And just like, that was a, Big, you know, we bumping heads all the time, you know, just because he wants to play too. But I, that was not going to happen with me because I was this, like I said, I was kind of in control of the team. Yeah. Coach Smith kind of like put the ball in my hands, and like it's on you. And uh, yeah, I, and, and messing around, Donald Williams got hurt. Donald ended up getting hurt that year too. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the funny part, I kind of played some two guard. I had to play the two. Jeff played some one. And like it kind of got a mixture with me, Donald, and Kaleb. We all kind of, I mean, and, and McGinnis kind of played like a little role when Donald was hurt for a little while. So yeah, we were never really fully healthy that whole year. And, so and if you think that you know that came from because the summer, you know, like you said, yeah. now those games, those pickup games, those yeah. you know, those days in practice. I mean, you know that that talent. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. white team, the white team wasn't your traditional white team. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no. Yeah. I mean the blue team. Yeah, yeah you the blue look team. Over real quick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you had a battle for that spot. Yeah, <laughs> you had a battle for that spot. <laughs> but it was like I said, we were never really fully healthy, and when we did get close to healthy. It never really panned out. We wasn't like we ended up winning the ACC championship. Yeah, we won, the, we won the regular season, I think that year, and we won the ACC. You know, Stack ended up being the MVP in the ACC. And uh, like I said, our first two games, we, we played Liberty, our first game, and we ended up playing Boston College. Boston yeah. College. Yeah, the game we lost with Howard Isley, Bill Curley, uh, Abrams, Dunye Abrams. Abrams, and and stuff like that. And and then of course that game, I get. Concussion. Yeah. Yeah. Second <laughs> half, like early second half, like the 17 minutes, 18 minutes, 16 minutes left, I get a concussion and I'm out my final game 
of my career in college. I couldn't yeah. finish it, which is still a sad point in my career, man. I always wanted to like finish the game and stuff like that. I, I recall this clearly. I remember being on the sideline and I, I felt fine. It's different with the concussion protocols now. And uh, the doctor, Tab at the time, I think it was Dr. Tab. He was like, yeah. all right, next media, I want you to remember these three words. So tell me these three words and the next media come, you come back, he's like, all right, tell me the three words. He's like, boom, boom, I go, I don't know what it was. Cat, dog, whatever, whatever. It could have been whatever. And I remember them. He said, all right, the next one, I'm gonna come back. So when he comes back, he said, I want you to count back from a hundred by sevens. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> I said, what? Count back from 100 by sevens. And the funny part, I only had like a minute to do it because like I was trying to rush to get back on the floor. Yeah. So, you know, you, you know, you go, you're like 93, you know, and you start to think, you're like, oh, shoot, you're like, hold up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like, hold up. He's like, and I'm trying to rush it. And he's like, nah, you can't go back in. He said, you can't, can't go back in till you, till you figure this out. Like, and this, this was like, it was close to almost like game time too. So it was like eight minutes left and four minutes left. It was like, like, dude, I, I, and I, I felt fine. And of course I ended up doing it, but it was, it was already too late. Yeah. And it was like, and of course we lost, it was a close game. And, you know, we ended up didn't win that game man. and it kind of was a, it was, it was a, for me, it was emotional because it's like, hey, it was my last game I played. At last Kelsey. game, no question. Yeah. And and for me, I can't even finish it. So I'm in concussion protocol. I can't even, and this is like the first time I don't think Coach Smith allowed the seniors to talk at the press conference for the last game. I know I didn't because of course I was in protocol, but I don't know if Montrose was on the stand, excuse me, on the stands or stuff like that. So it was definitely different. And I think it was an emotional time for Coach Smith too in that situation. Yeah of how the thing ended, let's put it right. right. So like I said, yeah. I think the most talented team I was definitely on for sure at Carolina. Yeah, that was, a, that was the most talented team, you know, that that ever, anybody anybody yeah. could participate in, you know what I mean? That people was, don't realize that, like people don't realize that out, that 94 team was crazy. Like, crazy, it was, yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> Great. They, they talk about your teams too. You got you you had some talented teams too, but that ninety four yeah. team was like, oh, yeah. even the guys on the bench, <laughs> you just like, yeah, like right. Calabra, Calabra could have been playing a lot of play. yeah, 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 like baller, yeah, you know, yeah. South Dory, you know, senior, older guy, you know, B Reese even started coming off the bench, so it's like he started yeah. for like the last two years, like <laughs> we were loaded, loaded. <laughs> Loaded. That, yeah, I mean, that's eight McDonald's All Americans. You yeah. ain't talking about Pat. You ain't say yeah. Pat. Yeah. Shoot. You know, Donald's <laughs> off and on. Donald. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. That nine. That nine. <laughs> yeah. That's all American. We were, we were so loaded, man. <laughs> what? And that ain't even, you know, shoot. That ain't even Cliff, if Clifford had stayed. Just imagine. <laughs> Just imagine. <laughs> Crazy. That would have been comical if Cliff was still around, you know. I think our sophomore year would have been different if Cliff would have stayed. Because, you know, yeah. Cliff was a special talent too. And uh it was, it was, so it was, yeah, that's, man, Cliff was a Cliff was a beast. Even his freshman year, he's the, he was a funny dude because he go we used to win a lot of games against the seniors in our in our practice because we was talented. And yeah, you know how Coach Smith used to like. He used to stop the practice, even if the scenes were winning. Like, oh well, you if you calculate such and such and divide it, y'all will lose by like twenty five. And we didn't play the <laughs> games. We only played eight minutes, coach. And he's like, oh, well, you think about it. You play. And he's like, coach, all right, we we'll see where you're going with it, you know. But we, yeah. to, we used to go at that team. And, and, oh, Cliff, no used to, and Cliff used to let them know too. He's like, coach, they can't guard me, coach. They can't guard me. <laughs> and Cliff was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so talented, man. So talented. And so, man, you know, um, you know, and after you left Carolina, you were blessed to play in the NBA uh, for quite a while and played in Europe for quite a while. And and you've always represented the institution 
um, in, in the ultimate manner. You've always been the ultimate big brother. You know, we've always spent time on the road and, mm-hmm. and kicked it and, and, and talked and, and just, and just enjoyed one another. But, you know, my, my, my toughest question, this is, I always say, this is my toughest question, um, to, to, to all of my brothers that I, I and sisters and everybody I get to participate when it's all said and done, deep fellas. When it's all said and done, and you know people are going through those lists and they they see your name, um, you know, and they they look at your accolades and all those types of things. You know, what is the one thing that you want people to know about Derek Phelps and his time at the University of North Carolina? Oh. Say the biggest thing, the ultimate team player. You know, I think I, with me, I, I did sacrifice, I say, offensively, way mm-hmm. more than I, I probably could average about, I'll say like 12 points a game if, mm-hmm. I, if I wanted to, but that wasn't my, my role. My men- and my mentality was like anything I could do to help this team win. And right. Then, and another thing, they could say I was a winner. So, That's right. Uh, yeah, I think that would be the biggest thing. But also winner, team player. And I, I was, like I said, I sacrificed. My, my goal was to be the defender, be, mm-hmm. the, be the leader, be the organizer, you know, get guys in place, get guys where they're supposed to go, you know, motivate our guys, you know, be the coach on the floor. And, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, I don't ask for much, you know what I'm saying? I, I, just disrespect what, what I did for, for Carolina. You know, that's all. You know, I don't, I don't ask to be in the rafters. You know, I don't, right. I don't ask for none of that stuff, you know. Do, do I feel like I should be up there? Yeah, in, in a way, you know. You know, mm-hmm. I'm still, I'm still, funny, but I'm still the career steal leader. You know, mm-hmm. single game and in career. So, which is crazy after over 30 years, you know, <laughs> you, you would think all the talent that came out of Carolina, you think, Somebody would have got the steel record by now or, or the single game, but you know, that, that's just saying a testament of what I've done there that still is an imprint of like, hey, I still have an imprint at Carolina for my years nope. playing there. So that, that's all I can ask for. So people, yeah. the real people know what I've done at Carolina. That's right. That's all I can ask we, for. We know. Yeah. Little, that's little it, bro man. know, little bro yeah. know for sure. Yeah, you know, you know the younger generation, they don't know, they never see me play. You know, they have no idea. So, you know. Well, you know they don't they don't study. Yeah. They don't, you know, the younger generation just they just don't study. They don't study the game cuz like you said before, if you study, you know, open the book. If you yeah. open the book. Yeah. And we and we <laughs> like, even when we played, so we knew about the guys before sure. and stuff like that and like know them very well too and, and like and understood like what the Carolina basketball was about. So, and we mm-hmm. forget it's pride too, as I said, when we played there. So we, right. get, we get it. So, but I think I play, the players get it. I'm just saying that the, some of the fans yeah. of the younger generation yeah. and stuff like that. I'm not saying yeah. they're foolish, but they love their team. Hey, no question. They yeah. should, but just don't know in the history. And of course, everybody got their favorite players. So, which, right. which, which is what it is. I, I get it. So, yeah. It, we 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 always say we, we accomplished what we did when we played. And That's so right. We we kept the, this thing going, and now we right. want, want these guys now to do what they do to keep this thing going because we 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 there in spirit. I wish I could be there. Matter of fact, I'm gonna try to be there now since I don't really have. So, <laughs> since I'm in transition and I ain't coaching because coaching now they don't allow you to even go around to Carolina like I used to. So. Right. I always wanted to be in Carolina in the summers and go to the camps and stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, now that I have a moment, I'm going to try to get out there even more and stuff like that. They come into New York this year, so I'm going to try to watch yeah. it in the garden when they play against Ohio State. So I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, definitely here to support, man. And that's, that's, that's our school, you know, and I support it every time, every single day. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Well, well, big brother, I appreciate you, man, for, for being a participant here on the Carolina conversation, you know, I've I've been able to get a few of your teammates, but you know, I haven't been able to get the leader. And so, <laughs> you know, it's 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 great to have, you know, as we call it, the head of the snake, the man that makes the engine go. Um, because your perspective is 
is a very, very special perspective because you are the coach on the floor. You are the guy that makes things happen. You know, everybody does react to your voice. Mm -hmm. And 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 hopefully, you know, people understand how important, you know, that voice is, um, especially being a Carolina basketball player. Right. You know, you know, it's very seldom, you know, very, you know, very few people get a chance to be in that position and right. understand the magnitude of it. And so um, I think you articulated that well today in, in being able to, you know, just talk about the small things that went on that you were able to. You know, and and get you know, and, and Coach Smith, you know, like yeah, listening to what you're saying, you know what I mean? Like that ain't that, that ain't easy. Yeah. <laughs> that is not an easy, you know. Oh, ah, dang! Ah, ah, we you think you're still in Christ the King? You know, you know, yeah. you know how that oh, yeah. thing starts. You know, uh, what I mean? <laughs> and the last thing with Coach Smith, man, I think being a point guard when you're under Coach Smith, I think the biggest thing was. Because King said this to me one time. He's like, you're going to get to a point in your four years or how long you have at Carolina. You're going to start thinking like Coach Smith and like, when you're going to call plays. Plays, that's right. Yeah, I, so I used to be in the huddle calling a play. I called a play and then Coach Smith be calling me. He's like, hey, run B1 double or something like that. Double, yeah. I said, Coach, I already called that. I'm already, yeah. Yeah, so like, okay. I'm already on the same wavelength being a point guard and, like, and trying to understand how Coach is and, and see what's next and like how he's trying to think. Like, I never like thought that would happen. It happened my sophomore year because I played a lot of minutes. So it got towards my end of my, end of the year, I started like be ahead of the game and see like, oh man, this is how they playing us. Oh, we should run yeah. this. Oh, they guarded such and such like this. Oh, let's run this one. And I, and I started to think like Coach Smith. So I was, and he used to look at me like, oh, you got it. <laughs> yeah. So I started to think like him on the court already. So it kind of made us, on the same wavelength. So yeah, that's a special, that was, that was a special bond as being a point guard at Carolina. Like, he was hard, I ain't gonna say, he was hard on point guards because he wanted, yeah. wanted us to think like he thinks. Yeah. Like, be run the team and be the coach on the floor. So that's why we had a lot of power mm -hmm. under, his, under his realm, stuff like that. No so. question, no question. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you again uh, DP for man taking the time to share with us today uh, on the Carolina conversation um, ladies and gentlemen once again let's make sure we say thank you to the great legend himself the leader of the 1993 national championship team Derek Bell. I appreciate you having me on man this was cool man yeah, yeah, like no Glad hey, I had man. the opportunity. Hey, you know, you my man, you the big bro, man. Love you, man. You know, you've always, always, you always, you know, been 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 good to me and uh and always been in position to teach me. You nah, know what I mean? Nah. And uh it's always great to to see you and chop it up and spend time with you. So God permit, man, I come back up top or you come down south, man. Let's let's get together. Absolutely. And uh, you know, any way I can be of a, a, a an asset or assist, man, let me know. Nah, man, all love. You already know that. That's for sure. Okay. <laughs> all right, tell the family I said what's happening. Got you, man. Appreciate you.